<laughs> this agent malarkey is an easy gig. Well, if you don't count the part with the AI agent absolutely mugging me off last time. Oh, you want the FA Cup with Fulham? Are you serious? I thought he's moved to Fulham now. He's unlikely to win anything. Nope. But today things hit a little differently because it isn't just me versus the AI. Player two has entered the game. And that player is, well, um, you lot. Look at me go. Look at you go. I'm also very proud of you lot because so far not one of you has slipped something naughty in there. Something naughty, but there it is. <laughs> Meet Elish Mariba. He's 24 years old and has been at RB Leipzig for six years after his £16 million move from Barcelona. Despite making two appearances immediately after joining, he was quickly shipped off on loan to Valencia for two seasons. In his second season in Valencia, he actually did make 30 appearances for the Spanish club, but only one of those was from the start. Upon returning to Germany, hunting for first team opportunities, he was hit with a complete brick wall. As in the next four years at the club, he would make 57 league appearances for them, but not a single start. Not, not one. He spent the second half of last season out on loan at Freiburg, and despite managing a run of starts in the team, he was unable to contribute, returning to the club without a goal or an assist to his name. But now, player two. Meet Nonne Madueke. He's 25 years old and has now been at Chelsea for four and a half years since his huge move from Feyenoord, but in that time has made only six appearances for the Blues in the league, with just one of them being from the start. He spent last season on loan at Villarreal and was part of an incredible season where they came second in La Liga. He played 25 times for them in the league, 11 of which were from the start, but only has one goal to show for it. It's now time to resurrect some careers. Today, we try to find both of these players the optimal moves to kickstart their careers. After that, we will follow them through the rest of their careers to answer once and for all whether they would have fared better with me, their original agent, or a third party. If you've seen the other videos I've made like this, then you'll know the drill already. But if you haven't, I'll put a link in the description to the playlist for the other so you can check that out. But do not worry, you'll pick it up very quickly. It's not required viewing. For the next one of these, should you guys want to see it, I'm thinking about bringing in another FM creator to compete against me. So let me know if you want to see that. And uh, I guess, hey, let me know who you'd want to see in that video. So about that third party, after I've picked and made my moves, I'm going to be taking the same save file over to Twitch chat on stream this evening. Well, this evening for me. Anyway, hopefully you've seen the community post about it. They will then be using the collection wisdom of the hive mind to choose appropriate moves for both of the players without knowing which clubs I've moved the players to on my version of the save. But more on that later. For now, it's my turn. Starting with Elish Mariba. Now, forgive me if my pronunciation of his first name especially it isn't exactly spot on. There was conflicting information I was given about it, so bear with me on that one. Now, he's listed for £11.5 million, which for a player of his kind of quality is an absolute bargain. And with him being on a wage of only £46,000 a week, that is going to open up a lot of doors for clubs that want a player of his quality. We might even be able to get him a wage rise for once in one of these videos. That would be a rarity. He's a really versatile player who can play in any of the three midfield central positions, uh, much like Ryan Gravenberch from the previous video. Video. Hopefully things go a little bit better for Elash than they did for poor Ryan. He can also speak Spanish, Catalan, French, German, and English, so he should have absolutely no trouble settling in pretty much anywhere. As always, I've picked out three potential moves for him with a little side of reasoning uh, to snack on while we decide. First up, Bournemouth. They've been on a real steady rise over the last five years, finishing better than the previous year in every single one of those seasons. Mateus Almeida seems to really be building something on the South Coast. Tactically, they play a 4-4-2, so he could comfortably slot into this team, especially given that his main rival's four positions are Lewis Cook and Gonzalo Villa, both of whom he completely outclasses right now. Due to that Premier League money, wages would be absolutely no problem, but I felt he could do slightly better. So I turned my attentions to France and Stade Rennes. They've been a little all over the place in Ligue 1 over the last few seasons, but last year they did come third and qualified for the Champions League. Add to that the two conference leagues that they've already won, and it makes a very tasty prospect indeed. Wages and budgets would not be a problem as they've got that Champions League moolah. They play a lovely 4-4-2. His main competition would be either Lovre Maia or Maddy Camera. One team appealed to me just a teensy little bit more. Virial. We briefly touched on them earlier. Under Abelardo, they've come third and now second in La Liga in the last two seasons. So he is clearly building an extremely impressive yellow submarine. Just like the others, they play a 4-4-2, so we'd get straight on in there. Wages would be absolutely no problem as he'd be nowhere near one of the club's top earners and his main position for places would come from Rafa Luis and Amadou Haidara, two of the weaker parts of their main first team. And remarkably, they currently sit top of La Liga after three games, having won all three of them and not conceded a single goal. So he really could be the player to take them to the very next level. So just like last time, I'm going to negotiate the deal as the manager of the club, then back out and mimic the deal with the editor to cause less disruption. So let's get this man a contract. He does still want a fairly sizable wage bump, but I think we can still work with that. Just mucked around with a few different options. Ended up settling on £65,000 a week with a £3 
million signing on fee. I bumped it up from 2.5. Slightly larger agent fee for a four-year contract. The other thing I changed is to add a 15 million pound relegation release clause. It's unlikely Villarreal will go down, but it would still earn them some, well, money, I guess, if he was. It has the standard minimum release clause that you often get in Spain, of course. 54 million, though, for a player that they're spending 11 and a half million on would still be phenomenal business for Villarreal, kind of no matter what happens. Next, we turn our attentions over to Nonne Madueke. He's listed for 15 and a half million pounds, which is still quite a lot of money, would make him the most expensive transfer we've done in one of these agent videos, but that is still half the price that Chelsea paid to Feyenoord for him, and there's still an incredible player under here. Now, he's on 100 grand a week at Chelsea, and I would have to expect that he would drop his wages slightly in order to find one of these moves, especially as he's listed as surplus to requirement, which I find always triggers players, generally speaking, to drop their asking price and demands and whatnot. He's massively versatile, could even be playing on the right-hand side, cutting inside on his left foot, or even as an inverted winger sitting further back. On the left, he can occupy both of the winger positions as well, adding even more versatility. Heck, he can even play as the number 10 if you ask him to. I'd say that an end goal would be to try to see if we can get him into the England reckoning, but at 25 and other factors, I don't know if that's going to be entirely possible. However, a switch to his other nationality of Nigerian could definitely yield some international caps in the future, hopefully. I was feeling a little bit fruity, so I went out of the box with some of these potential moves because, well, it's fun, isn't it? Uh, so first up, Galatasaray. They're flying high in the Turkish league, having won three back-to-back -back titles. They had the highest budget in the league comfortably, and some of the wages that some of their top-ranked players were on made me believe that a move was potentially possible. They play a 4-2-3-1, so he'd be comfortable on the right or the left, or even at the number 10 role, as we discussed earlier, and he'd easily walk into this team at the moment, even though they do have some good players. And now for the big drawback. He wanted basically every promise under the sun in order to even discuss a contract. I'm pretty certain he actually wanted to become manager as well, not to mention an insane wage demand. And I think this just comes down to the slightly lower rank of the Turkish league, which is a bit of a shame because I think he would have absolutely killed it here. PSV, his old stomping ground. And one of these days, the situation is going to be right and I am going to send a player back to their former club. But today is not going to be that day, but we were close. He knows the club well, having spent several seasons there before his move to Chelsea. He would walk back into this team. And amazingly, they have Anthony Martial on £93,000 a week here. So they're clearly willing to splash the cash to make it happen. I did also look at Celtic, but it was a similar story to that which we had with Galatasaray, where he just wanted ridiculous things in order to move to Scotland. Scotland Scotland's lovely, Nonny. Scotland's lovely. So in the end, I made my pick, and it's a familiar name from earlier in the video, Stad Rene. Now, it's a slightly out of left field choice because they do play a 4-4-2, so that means he'd have to play on the left side of that four. But his main competition for position would be Noah Okafor, who he is light years ahead of already and joined on a free transfer in the summer. And that's basically him walking into a Champions League team straight off the bat. Now, the one drawback for him could be that he doesn't speak French, and that might make settling in a little bit more difficult, but I felt that it was a worthwhile hurdle to cross to resurrect his career. So let's get this deal done. Yeah, these guys have actually got even more money than I thought they were. I can pretty much pay for him solely in clauses I just cashed out for nearly £14 million. <laughs> Adrian is driving a very hard bargain at the moment. A really hard bargain. Okay, still not ideal for what I was looking for, but when I tried to go anything below that, the agent was just immediately getting rid of everything. So four-year contract, £73,000 a week, which is more than I would have liked, but not awful. He does have a, an international wage clause, which if he does switch nations, could be quite complex, but it would still only put it to £84,000 four if he got a cap for England or Nigeria. He wouldn't be their highest earner, not even in the top three or four, I don't think. And I think he's worth it for a player of this kind of quality. The moves have now been made using the editor to cause no disruption. Ilaish Mariba now at Villarreal, £65,000 a week. As always, I've tried to mimic the contract as best I can. The only things I can't touch in the things with the in-game editor for some reason is the loyalty bonuses, which is a little bit lower, and the um, cup bonus, which I wasn't able to add in there. But luckily, it was already there, just a little bit lower, unfortunately. Same applies to Nani Madawike, £73,000 a week at Stade Rene. Uh, same exact story there with the loyalty bonus being a little bit lower, but there wasn't a lot of clauses in his contract anyway. So that's really, really nice. We'll of course find out how they get on with those moves later, as well as how they got on without making those moves. But now over to you guys, I guess. So with the hive mind, the way it worked was I presented chat with the exact same starting point that I had earlier today, and they were allowed to ask anything they wanted, and we could show them all sorts of stuff. They also had access to the save file itself, so they could look through things privately and make decisions on the fly. I then told them to eventually pick, as I do, three potential moves for the clubs. They would then get to vote on the winning one, and we would make a transfer for that. So let's see how that got on. So that's Sevilla. Let's have a look at them. So they play 4-4-2 as well, with Darda and Willock in their midfield. Quite impressive, actually. So Willock there at 145, and then it comes all the way down to Darda at 138. They've got Big Hazard. Who wouldn't want to play with Big Hazard in all of that? Uh, they are not newly promoted. That was last season, so they are clearly building something, at least. So there's Claudinho and Souza, and obviously Sunjic as well, are the players in question. He would get in this Blackburn team. I don't think there's many... There's not a huge surprise that he would get in ahead of Claudinho and Souza. Loftus-Cheek! Ah, can he dissuade Loftus-Cheek? Whoa! They've got... Sh look at the amount of money... 
Hey, Wolfsburg, have you considered signing some players, lads? Svonberg and Eggerstein is their midfield pairing at the moment. So it is a 4-4-2 at Wolfsburg. So my guess is if you moved someone like uh, Mariba into this team, he'd almost certainly go in place of Sergi Dard. And Sevilla is the winner. So Sevilla is going to be the destination for Ilash Mariba. Does this release clause feel low to you? Or should we just go for money and get the wage a bit lower? Lower wage, yeah? Okay, we can do lower wage. We could draw like 60... 64 with the 15 million pound relic. The 64 is pretty reasonable for Sevilla anyway, but we'll be able to get his wage down to probably somewhere between 70 and 80. So there's Dolan and Rui Bao. This might be an interesting one, actually. Their wingers are Rui Bao, who he's better than, and he's miles better than Tyrese Dolan because we genuinely haven't taken a gander at Brentford. But what I would say is, oh, good Lord. I, oh, I, Daz, I never thought I'd say this to you as a Brentford fan. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't wish this on anybody. They haven't got toast in. Oh, they've got toasted as well what is this this is just full and b now we haven't actually looked at these guys yet so money not a problem whoa not a problem whatsoever what about Bayer leverkusen they've got benge who looks like a no he's not a region is he and then manhoof on the right that's literally two of their wow leverkusen are stacked but just not in those two particular positions oh well would you believe it <laughs> it's ryan gravenberch knocking about oh let me guess they've got one dude on really high wages and no one else What the hell are you doing? Dear Maria, count me in and then out again to the accountant's office where you're going to stay and learn about financial responsibility. And he would be better. And in fact, he'd especially be better. Yeah, he'd get in their team in either side. That's so much money on a three-year contract as well. So hang on, Celtic have 15 million add-ons knocking about. So he actually could go to Celtic. That is an absolute domination. While that poll's finishing off, because it does feel like a bit of a foregone conclusion at this point. So we might be able to give him like a, a contract like that, where it's like a little bit higher than that but with a little bit low on the side and maybe like a relegation release clause because there's no way he's getting relegated with um, Leverkusen. But 20 million pound relegation release clause, getting him that extra year on the contract. No more bush beating. It is June 9th, 2032, which is five years after the we made the moves. I'm going to try and sort of get through these because we've got a lot more stuff to look at than normal. But first for us, we're going to start off with Mr. Ilash Mariba. Was my move for him to Villarreal a successful one? Is he still there? He is still there. That could be good or bad, to be honest. So let's see what we got. Oh, yes. Oh, look at the value. Wow. 180 appearances for Villarreal and 40 goals. This does imply he has a new contract because 2035 being the expiry date. So let's actually check that first so we can see what his current deal is. <laughs> Well, for a start, £190,000 a week at Villarreal. Man is earning mondo cash. I couldn't have asked for a better move for him so far. Wow. Okay, let's actually have a look at his career history so far. So, there was the move. And the fact that he's barely missed any games. 35 starts there. 38. He started and possibly played the full 90 minutes of every single La Liga game. That is consistency. The fact that he's got double-digit assists in every season except for the first one really does show. I wonder where he's been playing for them. Look at those man of the match awards. Uh, we'll come back and look at the milestones of his full career once we get to the end. And also can have a look at how the clubs themselves, particularly Villarreal, have performed. Things get a little bit more interesting now, potentially. Mariba, let's see where he's at. So he'll be 34 years old at this point in the save, and he's still at Villarreal. That didn't say that before, did it? He's changed position. That's actually kind of remarkable. 362 appearances for them in the league and 92 goals in La Liga. Still on £190,000 a week. I'm actually surprised that he never left. I'm really curious to see if they've won some stuff because it makes me wonder if they have. Um, obviously, with him being 34 now, he's starting to lose a little bit, but he still has another year left on his contract here. And this might be the longest, I think, that a player's ever stayed at a club when we've moved them. This is his 10th season at Villarreal. He must be a club legend by now, potentially. So has he kept it up? Oh my God. I wonder if that came with a position change. The, the chances of him managing to score 14 goals from central midfield without out of position change do surprise that is an absolutely outrageous record he's got 109 assists in la liga in the last 10 years that is ridiculous right okay that's enough of that let's just actually dig into what's been going on at Villarreal. first things first is he a legend or something at the club he must be surely on here he's a favored personnel which i guess is something when it's a club like Villarreal, he's being managed by brendan rogers brendan rogers is in charge of Villarreal at the moment and has had an absolute look at that 60 percent win rate over 210 games they've come fourth third fourth third third fourth fourth wow they've not dropped out of the champions league places in the last 10 years so in spite of the fact that they may not have won anything specifically he has still been a part of an absolutely incredible Villarreal side in fact they've actually reached a champions league semi-final in there against arsenal but it does feel like he is lacking that little bit of personal glory let's check his actual milestones lots of african midfielder of the year in fact it seems like he wins it pretty much every year there you go spanish league player 
Player of the Year, third place in 2032. That's a genuinely massive achievement. Runner-up as well in that same award. Oh, please tell me at least got one. So technically their only piece of silverware in this entire thing was they did win the Supercopa de España against Barcelona literally this just season gone. So I guess that does sort of count. He may not have won a lot as a player, but he's had an absolutely belting career, constantly playing at the very highest levels of European football. But it does make you wonder if he could have maybe got a move at some point, if someone had wanted to put him in that midfield and he could have won some trophies with them. But I still think that it's actually a really successful move. If he could have just won something like, you know, Copa del Rey or something in there or Europa League still at the Real, has he signed an extension potentially? He has. An extension has happened, and my goodness, there he goes. 103 goals in the league for now for Villarreal. <laughs> it's absolutely obscene. 2039, man is still there and has signed another contract extension and now has 110 goals. He's still starting pretty much. He's 46 games this season at 36 years old. What an absolute boss. So we might have to just go to his career retirement page and see if he does move clubs. But my suspicion is that he retires at Villarreal. Man must have had a testimonial too. He's been there 12 years. He isn't, but luckily he be actually became a head of youth development, albeit an absolutely woeful one. But he did actually, which means we can look at his career stats, which is very fortunate for us. So it actually looks like he did retire at the end of that season after adding another five goals and six assists. I am blown away by that career for Ilash Mariba. It's a shame that he clearly never actually managed to win anything in the end in total, but that is some career. So there it is, 629 appearances for Villarreal. He might actually be their record appearance holder. Oh yeah, I've just looked it up. It's not even close. At the current time of asking, it's Manos, Manu Trigueros with 444 in all comps and Mariba's just blown him out of the water. I think I've put down a pretty good record on that one. Now, whether chat or whether the agent will beat me is a different question, but now it's time to get on to Nonny Madaweke. As I feel like we've dwelled a little bit, but what a, what a career he's had. So Nonny, will he still be there for a start? Uh, he is still at wrong. Okay, interestingly. Now, I don't know where he's been playing for them this season, but he is still there. But it does look like his contract is up soon. His value doesn't seem to have improved dramatically. So current contract was one he signed two years into his stay at the club, which actually got rid of some release clauses. So in a way for Stad Renner, that's probably not a bad thing. That first season, he did start 18 games for them in his credit. Uh, and the following year was brilliant as well with 29 starts. So he really was building up to something great. And then... It just died. And then the following season, he was right back on it again. It's like, did he have a major injury or something? That's certainly something that's worth a look at. Let's see if he's had any major injuries. Oh, I just saw a seven month. Oh no, cruciate ligament injury. And it was out for seven months. And let's be honest, as much as it's out for seven months, it ends up being a lot more than that, as we all know with these injuries. Absolutely killed his season. And it seems like it might well have set him back quite a lot. So let's jump now to him being 35 and we can get a proper look at his career. Oh, he's already retired. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back a year. Excuse me. Dear Lord, friend, when did you retire? Young Ajax. Sorry? He's retiring at the age of 33. Oh, dearie me. Okay, let's just jump straight to career here. She's on 50 grand a week at Ajax. So, oh my God, he went on loan first. So in that, literally that next summer, despite him having some good seasons here, he... Oh, played not at all at the start of that year. And then was loaned to Ajax for a season. And actually did... Oh, he didn't do that well at all, actually. 16 substitute appearances, four starts. And then somehow, Ajax then decided to lend, spend nearly 15 million quid on him. That is an absolutely mad transfer. But he barely got in their team after that. That's kind of mental. Good God, this man's had damaged cruciate ligaments and a broken leg. Oh, poor Nonny. So after joining Stade Rene... He won Trophy des Champions. I don't know what that is. Is that like the French Super Cup? I'll have to check on that in a second. In fact, let's have a look. Yes, it is. It's weird how they've both won that, or the equivalents. And he has technically won three Eredivisie titles. And I guess that's something, because technically he never won any of those when he was at PSV, I don't suppose. So I guess there's that. That's a really disappointing one. And I don't think that I'm going to... I don't... I think I'm going to come third on him. I really do. Now things get really interesting, because now it's time to see how the Chateau moves got on. So we're going to start off by... Well, I don't know. We're going to have to find Mariba first. We're jumping straight to the 10-year point with Chateau just to save a little bit of time. Time. Let's see how he's been getting on at Sevilla, whether he's still there. My prediction is no, he won't still be there. But you never know. He seems like a loyal gentleman at this stage, and he's still there. And interestingly, he has made that same exact move. Oh, this is fast. Oh my god, he's earning more money. What a player. I don't believe this. This is remarkable. So he's 34 years old. He's on £250,000 a week at Sevilla. He's got 94 league goals for them as well. And nearly, well, 355 appearances. He's still got another year left on his contract. Oh, this is going to get super tight now. Very, very tight indeed. So let's just check his uh, career stats, whether he's been there the whole time, which of course he has. And mother of God, he has just been flying in with the goals. Less assists overall. It seems like he's been more of a goal scorer at Sevilla. At 
absolutely smashing it. I think this genuinely could come down to has he won anything at Sevilla versus has he won anything at Villarreal? I was not expecting this to be as tight as this. His current contract is enormous and actually only has a 78,000 uh, million pound release clause, but that could he could have had a, a bigger one earlier in his career as this is actually only a one-year deal that he's on at the moment that he's only just signed. So he could have got even more money before. But we're going to keep going for a couple of seasons, find his end point and then check the milestones and do the comparison because that is going to be very, very interesting indeed. Okay, so slight plot twist here. He has now hit 100 league goals for Sevilla uh, and 390 appearances, but you'll note that he is transfer listed by request for £5 million. Man stuck around. He put one more year in. He's got as many goals as that man had Dalmatians. 409 appearances in the league for Sevilla as well. He's ridiculous. In the last nine years, his longest injury was three weeks. What a machine. Milestones. Oh, he has. He's won stuff. In fact, he's won not a lot of things. For a start, he's won the Copa del Rey there with Sevilla almost immediately. Uh, won a Super Cup too. Some various African Midfielder of the Year awards, which is not a huge surprise. Another Copa del Rey as well. So he has won two Copa del Reys with Sevilla. And I wonder if that could be the, the kicker with them since he survived survived. He stayed at both of them for his entire career for 12 and 13 years, respectively. The question is how many goals and appearances he got for them in total. So he does make it into the Sevilla one as well. 540 seven appearances for them. So less than he made for Villarreal because obviously he had uh, one less season as well as various other ones. 134 goals though is genuinely astonishing. Truthfully, I think those two Copa del Reyes might just swing it in favour of Chato. Not entirely sure. But the question, there's still one more though, potentially. The AI agent could mud us all. You never know. Oh, okay. Um, so here we go. This looks like his final season at the club. And yeah, he's 33 here, technically. Um, but that is still a very early retirement. So let's, oh my goodness. I tell you what, I was not expecting that. You just got mudded, chat. You've seen it. 32 appearances for Bayer Leverkusen in four years. Which doesn't make any sense. But maybe there was an injury. There must have been, right? Wow, he just didn't start for them. Which is mad, considering that he, from what we could tell, looked like their best players in those positions. Unless they got a manager change. And maybe they played a different role after that. But look at this. Nothing. Just not a dicky bird. And eventually was sold to Crystal Palace for £3.9 million. And was playing in the Premier League for Crystal Palace. Did have a good season. 11 goals for Palace in the Prem that season. As they got relegated. And then he ended up playing in the Championship for Crystal Palace. Can't imagine he's won anything. Unless Bayer Leverkusen maybe snuck a cheeky. So a couple of best 11s in those first two seasons. So clearly there was a quality player here. And then something changed at Bayer Leverkusen. It has to be an injury. Followed by a managerial change. But let's see. Was there a major injury in their period? Well, yes and no. So he had a hip injury which kept him out for three months in that exact season. And I do wonder if that's the point when maybe Bayer Leverkusen signed someone else to replace him and it just kind of did him too much damage and he was unable to recover because it seems like his injuries weren't as bad. Ah, there you go. Raphael Vicky was sacked and replaced by Thomas Tuchel. And don't worry, I've seen Gary Rowett. Tuchel came in, played a system that he couldn't fit into. Absolutely killed his career. So there you go, chat. You've got Thomas Tuchel to blame. Current Denmark manager. So I guess it's now time to turn our attention to the AI manager. Um, I think we need a name for the AI agent that we always compete against. So if you've got any ideas for the name of the AI agent, then let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to maybe mock up a mid-journey profile for him. So this is where we both get absolutely mudded. That's my prediction here. Moriba is at Manion. Oh, good Lord. How does the agent always do this? How does he do this? Man is an absolute menace. He might have muddled us both here. Iash Mariba, Man United, £135,000 a week. But look at that transfer fee from Hoffenheim. There's no... Uh, wow, he hasn't played that much for Man United this season. I just didn't see this... Okay, we've got to work out how this happened. So what happened then? So he was loaned to Hoffenheim, presumably with a mandatory fee. Then scored 10 goals in the league for them the following season. Uh, then some solid seasons for them. But then Man United were just there. £76 million move from Hoffenheim. And he's been fantastic for Manchester United as well. He's had a really solid... What's that? Seven years at Old Trafford now? Regular starter, it looks like, in all but... Well, a little bit the first one. Potentially could have been a January move. In fact, it has to have been. And it seems like in the last couple of seasons, he's... No, literally only this year as he started to fade out of United's first team. He may well leave and find himself another club at this rate, but £76 million move. Oh, yeah. It's a couple of season 11 appearances. The same kind of rewards that he tends to get each time. Then he moves to Manchester United and immediately wins the Europa League with them. And then best 11 for them. Another Europa League win for Manchester United. Stays at Manchester United. I mean, we've got no trophies, two Copa del Reyes, or two Europa Leagues, and a £76 million move. It seems like international recognition for him was basically the same. Uh, he roughly got the same number of caps for Guinea in either of them. It's really a question of his own personal achievements in there, I suppose. Uh, let's just see how much more he's got left in his career. It looks like he might leave. So would this be the first time that he... Well, no, technically, he's had two clubs in this one. Is he still there? He is. Not only is he still there, but he's actually extended his contract a further year. He's still at United, and he is now retiring. He is listed here, presumably because he wasn't getting any game time. But it looks like he's retiring in pretty much the same season, I think, in all of them. Oh, no, 
no, with uh, Villarreal, my pick, he did go one more year, I think. Mostly became a bit part player for United over the last couple of seasons, and this season barely featured at all. Any extra milestones to add to the end? Oh, good lord. <laughs> Just when he thought it couldn't get worse. He goes and wins the Community Shield, the Premier League, and the Carabao Cup in the same season. So he's now got a Premier League title and th the big one, the Carabao Cup tournament. Tournament? Title on top of that as well. God almighty, I was feeling so good when I saw his career at Via Round. Look at this. I'm not going to get a bronze medal here, aren't I? Right, okay. We move on from that to the final chapter of Nonne Madaweke. I, I feel like, honestly, the agent only needs to have like an average time here to probably beat both of us and actually take the dub. Here we go. Nonne Madaweke. Is he even still playing? He's not. Okay. <laughs> He just likes to go to bed early, all right? Like, he's in bed by nine, tucked up, sleeping hat. Right, is he still here now? Surely he's here now. And he's at Almeria. Given the jokes I made about them and spending lots of money, I'm a little concerned about that. Is that a loan? It looks like he must have been on loan, maybe? And then Osasuna as a... I, okay, this has got to be broken down a little bit, interestingly. So Almeria loaned him for a season, which we... Yeah, so that, 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 does, that does make sense. Then they spent £13 million on bringing him to the club permanently, and he did start pretty well for them. Like, he was playing games for them regularly in La Liga here. Then he seemed to fall completely out the pecking order and then go out and loan to Osasuna for our season. A team that actually were doing quite well at the time as well. This is, mm, at least he's actually found consistent football. That's what I will say. He seems to have at least found a club he can play for. Uh, what sort of money is he on here? £100,000 a week, £52 million release clause. No one was paying that. Seasonal best 11 squads for him, but no actual like trophies or anything at Almeria. They still probably do just about get it because he had at least got some consistent football here. I do wonder though why he went on loan randomly in the middle of that. Because it seems like it would have been around about here. So they were going through quite a lot of managers, it would seem. But they stayed in the top flight the whole time. Patrick Schick's currently in charge, and they've just been a solid, stable, if inoffensive, top flight side in Spain, really. I don't know. That one, I think we both might have done some oofs, to be honest. Particularly with Madueke. I was not expecting the Leverkusen move to work out so poorly for him. I thought you had that in the bag. Career resurrection number three in the books. This one feels like it has been a bit of a long one, but I felt that I just wanted to show you guys more stuff so we could have a little bit of a laugh at some of the random things that happen in these types of saves. If you have enjoyed this, uh, please do leave a like on the video. That'd be really, really helpful. If you could do that, subscribe if this is the first video of mine that you've seen and you've enjoyed it. There'll be more of this stuff coming up next month, hopefully one with another creator. I've got uh, another video coming out next week, which is going to be a bit very very different but i hope you guys will check that out and some big stuff planned for over the summer as well so yeah enjoy the rest of your evening have a lovely weekend enjoy all the international football and all that loveliness and i'll see you guys very soon hold your gun capybara bye bye